then looking at the uh, new benches. Um, there's this large group here, group of three. Uh, and looking again, there's no clear front. Um, I'm not going to go in there and reach it, but what is clear is that the front is probably somewhere around there. So looking at this first larch forest planting, I mean this was done six, seven years ago. The issue isn't so much the trees, there's some lovely branch and some and some stuff setting up. Um, we've got uh, good secondary branching coming out. Um, and here, all of it on the, on the externals looks lovely. So taking some one-sided trees, putting them together in a little group of three has worked out well. But I think, um, I think if you look, there's definitely some balance issues. There's something missing here. Um, and I don't know whether I could put perhaps a little tree here and another little tree here. There's a lot about this tree I like. There is a lot about it I like, but there's just that empty space here. Um, and perhaps something on this side that I don't know maybe just maybe I could do something with but I think the bigger the bigger thing is that I've got to make some decisions over the priorities over some of this stuff and the remaining maples which haven't yet come out to bud versus these which are really starting to, to green up um, some lovely structure in these but they either need to get singly potted up or do something plantation wise um, I don't know, plantation is always the excuse you use when you just don't know what to do with a tree or it looks odd shaped or it's one sided and you think oh that'll make a great forest but I think I'll show you uh, a clip of, of this one and that's exactly what I did with this um, five trees in a copse um, and sometimes it looks good but I don't know it, it's just lacking something um, I don't know whether that would grow naturally in nature. It's like it's naturally falling away from a central point. So unless there was some sort of spaceship or some dinosaur in there, there wouldn't be any reason for the trees to act that way. Um, so I'm going to have a little go and look at that and see what I can do. It's always difficult because there's a lot of work in, in doing the roots. There's a lot of work in, in all of this stuff. And to be fair, I've got lots of other things I want to do. But in the end, Ryan Neal from Bonsai Marai just completed doing a, um, a larch rework. Brilliant, brilliant job. If you want to see something fantastic, what he did. Um, and uh, Nigel Saunders has just redone his, um, his forest as well. So I think they've both prompted me that I have to uh, move to a little bit more, uh, more work in this area. Um, also, big thank you to John Aaron. He's given me this big um, mic that sits on top of the camera and it's got a big furry Busby hat that also goes on it. And apparently, that's supposed to aid the sound and, uh, and help uh, diminish or minimise external wind noise. So by the time I finish looking at this, we'll know whether or not that's true. And you can clear from this hat, clearly it's sunshine. Um, so I'm just protecting my um, balding head from um, bird poop and ninja spiders. So let's have a look and see what's in this larch now. I've got wires in there, so yeah, basic tie down on it. To be fair, I don't think I did the repots on that. This long ago, I think it's maybe two years. Gosh, no, there's hardly any roots in that. So what have we got under there? Some fibrous, but there's hardly any roots at all. I wouldn't normally do the repot on this. There's so much good soil around it, but I want to have a look and see if I can improve the composition. Um, individually, the trees aren't of any great value. So, as I say, they're all from the all from the 2001 collection. I bought 20 trees, 20, 25 trees. So let's just see what we've got in here. The problem is, is once you start doing a composition like this, you get more and more roots matting together. Um, obviously makes the separation more difficult. Now, the temptation here, you know, I've got the wire here, is to just pull it and yank it out. But, we don't wind up breaking too many roots that are in good position. So there's that little bit of wire there.
the thing we noticed there straight away is they're, they're holding together pretty well. But I've ended up pulling apart with those. They've both got nice little roots on them, so they'll be fine, and I may well actually. Put them a lot closer together. And then once I've got them all safely separated, with separating it is just a case of doing your best to just tease out your roots. Try and keep as much of the root structure in place as you can. I think I have to accept that the whole way I put this together was wrong. And I'm going to start again with it. And pick five or six, maybe seven trees and see what I can do. So I'll come back to you when I've got seven separate trees. There they are now. Um, roots washed out. I'm just waiting to decide what else I'm going to put with them. Um, there was very little root growth, so in hindsight it is a good thing that I've actually taken a chance and separated them. I've picked these three. Um, it's amazing what you do when you actually start looking. I couldn't work out why I had rocks on the tops of some of the trees. And that's because I'd done root over rock on a few of them, so the ones that I thought I was going to use ended up uh, going back into the nursery to let the roots regrow. But I've got three here. Different, different trunk thicknesses. Um, lots on one side, although some imperfections. So individually, I don't think they'll make anything as trees. Good roots. Definitely got enough to work with there. Let's see what we've got here. When it comes apart like that, you know that there's a problem in the roots because it's definitely not binding with anything. That's been in there for a year, so although it's got lots of fresh buds on it, but after a year, any larch that's healthy will have put out enough roots that the soil shouldn't just fall away like that. It's a very, oh gosh, very one plane of roots, two dimensional. That's going to sit in beside a tree, I think. There's four branches all coming from the same point at the top of the trunk there. Again, that's not going to be much good. See, this is how that root should have come out from that tree before. They've both been in potting mix the same amount of time. They both got treated the same way. Um, but for some reason, that one didn't, didn't do well. Rather than unmat all of that and just cut away For any of you who winced when I um, decimated those roots, sorry. So the informal way of deciding if the pot's going to be big enough for me, I know that I haven't got the ability to wire these all down individually as the likes of Ryan Neal might have or anything. So I think it'll just look good like that. And I'll put loads of saw around it and there we go. No, but uh, maybe I'll go back to the original pot I had um, that's the next, next biggest rectangular one I've got, but I don't think I'm going to fit seven trees in there without it looking ridiculous. Um, so it could be that it goes back into that other round one, or I split into a five. I could do a five and a five and a four, or five and a three. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's fun now, and it is all I'm going to be doing now is seeing how they pair together um, to try and achieve. A realistic look I might put a nice bit of rock in there but uh, yeah right now I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna do it I've just been going around all of them and uh, trimming getting branches into the right sort of situation that I would want so that I don't need to do any unnecessary pruning when they're in place well they're not going to be secured down that well I shouldn't have thought so while I can get at them and move them around basically get rid of buds, stubs, and try and get what I would have as the basic pruning structure for them. I can also get a, a much better and stronger feel for how, how they may go together. This is the tough bit now because um, if I'm honest I haven't got the skill to wire all this in and I haven't got a clear idea and truthfully I think the pot's too big so Here's a combination of rocks uh, and just trying to pick a foreground and, and work out what fits in. It's 
fourth time I've had this all out and emptied and I'm still trying to think about how naturally foreground and stuff will come into come into this. And it's always difficult because you've got to try and think what am I trying to achieve? Is this going to be the front or the back? Or am I just trying to throw the trees in? Which is what it feels like to be perfectly honest. But I should just keep working on it and and it's just trying different combinations. Um, well, five or six minutes later, I think it'd be nice if there would be smaller trees in the middle, but I am thinking of putting a whole rock mound in the middle or something, but it's not perfect, but I'll tell you what it is. It's 100% better than the five radiating trees. And now it's just a case of just slowly fixing them in a bit. Obviously you can't beat a good rock for giving stability. We want enough of the roots covered that should they be reasonably well sighted and not exposed to undue wind, which they won't be. I'll have them in a very, very sheltered spot. The rocks I'm using to support now, I'll just hold each tree individually. And what I'm trying to do is just start to encourage some of the, the roots that are sitting on the top there to just make their way downwards. Um, I have managed to find a little baby and there's a little baby cutting there so I might just add two little cuttings there to little have baby trees but I'm just going to keep working my way around. I don't like to have trees actually leaning against the pot itself. I'll probably find something that I can just put in there just to jam it out. And it may be that that branch actually gets removed. It's quite an ugly looking one. In fact, let's make that decision now. <sighs> there we go. Nice big thick bit. It's done. Um, I'm quite satisfied. They're um, they're all very healthy trees. Um, just trying to work out whether I do put small small ones there or not. out of all my time of doing large cuttings I've had success with this one and that one too in all these years yeah I'm not sure if anyone else has had more success with um, large cuttings the fact that I've been able to do it a couple of times suggests it's more a case of uh, just working out what was it that worked but, um, time of year, probably in the early days, I didn't always take notes of cuttings, I used to just take cuttings whenever I pruned a tree, and I wasn't always pruning larch at the right time of the year. Oh, lovely, I'll just get rid of that one. Okay, well, that is basically it. Okay, so there's only one thing missing from this uh, sort of composition. I had to look around the garden to try and find some moss. Not a hope. The birds have already found as much as they can. But what I did find is, uh, like Nigel, I like to have my animals. So normally with a larch I'd put perhaps dinosaurs or something. But what about... A little brown bear just coming out of hibernation going yawn yawn where's my honey so 
Yeah. I'll give it a spin, a 180, or even a 360. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But I'll be honest, I... It's something that was completely impromptu. Um, at the beginning of the day I had no intention of sorting out that mess. The 5 tree, which I'm showing to you, will be somewhere up in that picture somewhere. It's now this. Um, and uh, I have no reason to doubt that uh, the roots aren't going to be good enough to, to maintain this composition. Bears leaning over, he's obviously had a few too many. He's been with um, Aussie Bonsai bloke having a, having a few tinnies by the look of it. Yeah, um, I mean I don't know where these little larches will stay in the final composition. Um, they're probably just a little bit out of whack. I'm probably even something that's a couple of years older than that. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you've got something from that. And uh, and actually, I've given you a bit of confidence to say you don't need to be worrying about wiring things into the pots. You don't need to be worrying about having a a, a plan. Just start with what you've got. If you've only got a small pot, then you fit what you can. Um, and it's trial and error, um, but the good thing about larch is the roots are just so prolific that uh, if it's healthy and left to its own device, um, I won't I won't bother pruning. I'm just going to let it go to town. Um, we should get a really strong root root growth there, and uh, I can probably have a look at this this little uh, plantation in I'd say two years. Um, and it's certainly not going to rival Nigel's forest, but. Uh, mm. I'm pretty happy with that. So, from uh, Expressions of Grace and uh, Xavier, that's all for now. Cheers.